Now, electricity consumers in Nigeria are lamenting an alleged delay in the issuers of prepared meters, saying that they can't continue to cope with the regular estimated billings. According to them, many households are still waiting indefinitely to receive meters even months after payments were made. Meanwhile, the federal government has said that it will sanction any electricity distribution company or its representatives selling meters or asking Nigerians to pay money to get the item. According to a presidential directive, meters should be made available to Nigerians at no cost and must be produced locally in order to create jobs and revive local industry. Joining us to discuss the biting issue is a public affairs analyst, Victor Okai. Good morning to you. It's good to have you on The Morning Show. Good to be here. Um, Victor, <laughs> please, before we get into the whole metering yes. of Nigeria and the billing, please, can you help us or help Nigerians untangle this confusion about the 50% increase in tariff? NERC are coming out and saying there was a, 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 a statement put out on the 31st of December that said there will be a, an increment from the 1st. They came back to say that was false, that that wasn't going to happen. It's been a lot of back and forth. Can you help us make sense of that? First of all, let's start from that point. Well, um, you know, it's like what usually happens in this country where sometimes you test the waters. Um, you find out how people would react. Um, they tried to increase it uh, before now. And the reaction from the public wasn't quite pleasant. There are a few things that are very touchy to Nigerians. In the Arab countries, bread is one, very, is one thing you can't play with. But in Nigeria, electricity, um, um, uh, fuel, petrol, uh, are two very, very sensitive things because this is like the bloodline of Nigerians. And so when, when, that, when we had the announcement in December, um, then the NERC came out again to debunk it and say no, that they had not increased. Um, but the confusion here is simply the fact that they also said that the discos should revert back to the original prices, which means uh, obviously somewhere along the line there must have been some sort of agreement or some sort of um, uh, understanding that there was going to be an increase. Uh, but I think that the times are very sensitive, and uh, government, especially with the recent SARS, and SARS, uh, uh, what do you call it now, uh, problem, I don't think that they want to compound the situation, especially with the security situation generally in the country. So um, that they want to increase is not in doubt. Uh, how to do it is a wisdom they require, and uh, they are still searching for how to go about it without uh, creating problems. Thank you. So then if we look at this issue, which is the delay in uh, Nigerian consumers receiving these prepaid meters, what do you think is causing that chocolate block? Why, why hasn't that uh, materialized for so many Nigerians across the country? Well, this is a problem. It's easy to just make popular or populist um, um, uh, uh, policies. Um, usually what, we ha what happens in this country in many situations is uh, you create you you create the policy first before you start thinking about how to how to implement it. I would have thought that enough licenses would have been given out uh, to prepaid meter companies, and a lot of them would have you know set up, and we are sure to meet the target before going to make such announcements. Because indeed, it's it's a very good idea because it's going to generate a lot of. Uh, uh, new jobs, it's going to save us foreign exchange, So, which is a very good idea. But the thing is, you have said to the discos, um, don't sell meters, but there's a shortfall because the discos themselves don't even have enough. I know that in one of my offices, I had said to them uh, that they should you know, uh, get a prepaid meter because we are the old meter and all that. And, you know, having in mind that, you know, the government has said it's free. And then going to the uh, disco, what my staff were told was that, um, <laughs> say that is government, now government won't be that, you know, uh, that we, where are the meters, you know. Um, they may have a point because if there is a glut, then they cannot hold it. But if there's scarcity, then obviously, you know, uh, demand and supply, it's just pure economics. If more people want it than is available, 
then, I mean, even if the people, don't forget that this has been the bread and butter of, uh, from the old Nepa days, you know, the Nepa staff selling meters, collecting more than the required amount. And the discos carried it over. You can't get a meter for the exact amount, you know. So, and it creates an opportunity for them to make money. And that's exactly what is happening again. Because you say to a people, don't sell. Give them free of charge. Have you done an audit of the number of households that require meters? Have you provided the number of meters that are required? You know, have you identified where these meters are required so that you can distribute them effectively even before making the announcement? That's a dilemma that we're faced with or confronted with at the moment. So, um, are we to say that the words of um, President Muhammad Obari on the 4th of November should be taken with a pinch of salt? Because when, you, when the president says one million uh, meters should be distributed, our funds will be uh, released to help the discos do that. And we are here. And we are, there's still a lot of scrambling for meters. People have gotten, uh, people have paid for meters that are not getting meters. Who am I to say that the president is lying? That's the, uh, no, I, no, I, no, didn't, no, I didn't put you on the spot to say no, that. No, I'm just asking the question. No, no, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, presidents don't lie. Okay. You know? <laughs> so, um, <Yes. laughs> anyway, <clears throat> the truth is that, um, you know, he has given a directive. But, you know, in management information system, your, your decisions are only as good as the information that you're fed with. And so, if the president is fed with the wrong information about what's on ground, uh, he will make a policy statement that will fall short or fall flat on his face. I think that is what is happening right now. If you say roll out a million, the question is from where? Have you done an audit? How many households really require meters? You know, they're not doing the right thing. You know, so that's why we're having a problem. We need to know how many households, you know, require. I'll give you a small example of where this has been done very successfully. I live in an estate in Lagos called Magodo GRA, phase two. Uh, we pay a premium price for uh, meter. We enjoy electricity for about 24 hours, almost uninterrupted, except if there's a major uh, problem. Now, how did we go about this? Okay, first we agreed that we were going to pay a premium, not a problem. But what the distribution company did was, they first of all checked and, saw, and, and, and did an audit of the entire estate. Those that had the old meters, they changed them, you know, replaced those meters, um, found out, you know, made sure that everyone was, sorry, that everyone was adequately metered. And then they, you know, then they, they started implementing, you know, and, and today everything is going easy. Generators are obsolete in that place right now as, as we speak, you know. Now, that is what that company has been able to do, but that's also because probably it pays them, it benefits them because they're getting, they're getting a premium or they're charging more than what, you know, people will pay normally, although we're happy to pay because we don't have to pay for fuel and all that. But I expect that on, on a macro level, that's what the government should be able to do as well. Find out how many households. It's not difficult. I mean, the discos are in communities, you know, so they can go there and do an audit. And there are local government areas, you know, and all that. We can use, or there are some, government has so many ways of finding out how many households have meters, how many don't. That's the beginning. If you don't do that, you can't, this policy will not work, you know. And so the president will be fed wrong information. And then when he speaks, it will then appear like he's not, uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. If we, you've, you've given yourself as an example where you say that you enjoy upwards of 20 to 24, or almost total um, yes. electricity, yes. and that's because that you, yourself, along with the members of your community, are happy to pay for it because you're saving money on fuel. Yes. How, in your most generous or your most optimistic forecast, how long do you think it will be before the rest of people in Lagos alone will be able to enjoy that type of uh, that, that type of resource. Are able are able to be given that choice and have the means to readily pay for it because ultimately it does come down to the fact of if you are going to charge people more, there should be a, a heightened amount of service that they should be receiving. Yeah. And even then, we have to make sure that people can afford to to you know to enjoy the type of electricity that they would like. 
I think it starts from metering, really. Mm. Um, with estimated billing, you can never really be sure. Even the companies are sure changing themselves. It's, it's important that what, what prepaid meters do is uh, they help for accountability. You can, you, you, I mean, you, it, it saves you from theft, you know, of energy, you know, you know, and it also protects you from your staff doing, I mean, the, the staff of these companies from doing on the hand business with, with people. Because there are so many people who are underestimated billings who uh, pay the staff you know, to, you know, I mean, the money doesn't really get to the discourse. That's the truth, mm. you know. So it starts from, if the companies realize that it is important for them to put everybody, it may appear initially like they may not be making as much money as when they do estimated uh, charges or billings, but if everyone is adequately metered, then you know how much energy you can you can project how much energy to take from the national grid you can then project how much energy is consumed you can then know how much you can project your income you know how much money is coming in so it's very very important and there's proper accountability that way you can i mean it makes life a lot easier but for many of them i don't know why it's like rocket science um i expect that whether the government says it or not, that the discos on their own should try and make sure that everyone is metered, you know? But, so if it's going to go around for the general public to enjoy, the first thing to do is to meter, get prepaid meters, like we do with um, uh, what you call it now, GSM. You know, you, you, get, you buy what you need. And it, it also uh, forces people not to waste energy. Because when you know that you're going to be uh, given an estimated bill, you can, run, you can run your AC because whether you run it or not, the company will just charge you what, whatever they like anyway. You know, so, and that creates a lot of waste in the system. And it affects, you know, the national grid so that, Places where you really need energy, there may not be enough. And where you don't need it, it is being wasted. All right, uh, Victor, since you mentioned that point, because there are some people who, I don't want to say, still live in a forgone era, who believe that... In where? In a forgone era, okay. who believe that... I mean, having a meter is almost like trapping them in a little box that would mean that they would have to always pay a certain amount. Some people still believe that the best way out of it is to still have estimated billings because they get very little. Now, you're talking because I know people that pay as little as 3,000 naira per flat here in Lagos State, while some people are paying upwards of 30, 40,000 naira per flat here in Lagos State. And those uh, those people will do everything possible to ensure they do not get meters because certainly they'll pay more. It's the reason everyone should get a prepaid meter. Like I said, ultimately it averages out and it pays the disco and it pays the consumer. You use what you need. Uh, you pay for what you need. You use only what you need. Um, yes, people can, can afford to say, okay, they are paying only 3000 because and the reason they pay 3000 is because of connivance with the staff there's a lot of there's a lot of theft not only of energy but even of money that should go to the discos you know uh, the staff many of them feed off feed very fat of their companies because there is no proper what estimated bills do i mean what prepaid meters do they help for proper accountability you know, so it is important. And so people are living in the old era, you know, you're, you're talking about. It's time to put a stop to it. Because when there's a meter, a uh, prepaid meter, then there's discipline. They cannot, and if you bypass it, it's a criminal offense, mind you. Uh, and I, I know that every once in a while, uh, the electricity company comes around to look at our meters, to see whether they're working or not, to find out if people are bypassing them. That's a check system, and I think that's something that can be done. And uh, so whoever is caught uh, stealing energy will have to face the law. It's not going to be everyone. If you see isolated cases, uh, you can pick them up, and it will be an example to people in the, in the neighborhood. So in short, then, you are definitely in favor of prepaid meters as opposed to estimated billing. I think I'm with you there, Aaron. I think a lot of people... Uh, they, feel they, pay, be... they feel they'll pay more yeah. um, if they have prepaid meters as right. they estimated billing. Not necessarily. What it simply means is you can decide how much... I mean, it's like GSM. You decide how much you want to consume. Mm. 
Okay? Right now, you can afford to put all lights on, you know, uh, 24 hours. But if you know that you're going to be paying for every kilowatt of electricity or whatever, every, every, every unit of electricity, then, I mean, as you're leaving the room, you're switching the lights, you're turning the lights off, uh, you're turning the air conditioner off, only when you need it would you put it on. It, 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 it forces you to be disciplined. I mean, when we go outside this country, we, <clears throat> we observe these things. Why should it be any different when we come back home here? You know, so we need the discipline. We, we need, because the light that is being wasted, some industries need it, some companies need it for production. And so if, if, people, if people use energy wisely then, and conserve it, then those who really, really need it for production will then have enough and it's going to help the economy. All right, Femi. I don't know. Information, information, information. <laughs> I don't know how much information needs to be put out there or sensitization by the NARC to ensure that people know the effects or they know what they are playing with or know the both sides of the coin yeah. on what... Yeah, because as, as uh, Victor mentioned, yeah. that, you know, the unused electricity can be used for other things. Yeah, true. If we're talking about developing Nigeria to meet its own manufacturing capabilities, there's mm -hmm. definitely uh, some reliance on electricity there. So I can see where that's coming from. If we go back to the reason why we're even talking about this topic today, though, it is about the delay in Nigerians receiving their meters. Do you <laughs> think, how, how long do you think it will be before, you know, we stop hearing these complaints? True. It will be a very long time, I'm mm. sorry to say. <laughs> very long time. Because, like I said, I've tested the, I've tested the system, and uh, they have said it quite clearly. You know, say, we, as they say, we the meter. Eh? Government just, they talk their own. So, I mean, when you hear things like that, uh, it may not be without some right of truth. Uh, it's one thing to give an order, but you could just be, they could just, the government could just be playing to the gallery, you know, because if... If there, like I said earlier, if there's a glut, which means an abundance, you know, you, you, you fill the whole place with meters. And what are they doing with it? They will, they will deploy, you know, but they are not. It's simple economics. Scarcity, you know, will, you know when, when demand outstrips supply, uh, <laughs> even if something is free, it will have a price because there is a great, you know, uh, uh, demand for it, and you cannot meet that demand. So those who need it more desperately will, will want to, you know, um, if you like, tempt the system with some money. And with the current state of the economy, I don't know how many of those workers uh, will resist the temptation. That's a problem. It's, and it's going to take a very long time. Many of them are saying, it, yes, they will do that. But I keep repeating it. If you ask them today, how many households really need these meters? Who has the statistics? You know, can anyone really, even the NERC, I mean, can they tell us precisely how many meters, how many homes need to be metered? How many homes will need to be metered, you know, in the near future? Because, of course, new houses are coming up and all that. You know, how many prepaid meters are, are I mean, um, old meters are out there? Do they have this information? Who is putting this information out? Because you cannot, you cannot plan if you don't have data, you know? And I'm not hearing that. Maybe they do, but the information is not out there in the public. Not, that, not one that I'm aware of, I must confess. Because only when you have such information that you can... If, when the president gave that directive, if they had adequate information and they had done what they should have done, by now, or every, you don't even... I just give you an example of what happened in my estate. You know, you don't need to. It's not rocket science. This is something very simple. These people had, they, they went out there, checked how many houses had the old meters, changed those meters, first of all, before they started implementing their new uh, tariff and 24-hour supply of power. So, I mean, it's, it's a simple process, and, and that's how it should be done, you know. So at that, at that micro level, it's been done. At the macro level, it can be done. It's just something that they just need to think about. But government bureaucracy or sometimes, uh, you know, in a bit... I, I suspect that when these people come before the president and the president tells them, and says, oh, all, all correct, sir, no problem, Your Excellency. Um, it is taken care of. The meters are available, even when it's not. You know, no one is telling the president the truth. And so he goes out there and he tells half-truths based on the information that he's given. All right, um, Victor, all we've said is 
It's just boiling down to one particular point, which is the fact that there is poor information on what should be done yes. and what, uh, what, what, um, what, what are the adverse effects of not having or probably getting estimated billing is costing Nigeria down the line. Yes. Should the NARC be doing more? Going back to that question again, in terms of sensitization, or do they even do they themselves know that that is a major problem or that is a major loophole in whatever they're trying to do? Not informing people because we've seen this thing happen time and time again. When um, when um, the tariffs are to be are to be jacked up, are, are there enough information put out there why these tariffs must be jacked up other than what the Minister of Information said that? In Nigeria, is paying the least, if you put it, the median least among several other African countries. Uh, first, let me start with a caveat. Uh, the head of corporate communication at NC NERC should please note, I'm not interested in his job. We're just interested in helping Nigerians. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, um, now, but on a more serious note, um, this, is, this is something that, is very, very important. We need to know how important electricity is to our economy, to, to Nigerians. It's, it's, like, it's like the blood on which the economy runs. Um, the, the Minister of Information talking about us paying the least. The truth is, Nigerians are not averse to paying for good services. I just gave you a small example. We're not complaining, you know, because, I mean, generators are obsolete where I am right now. I can't remember. I, I can't remember when last I heard the sound of a generator in my neighborhood. I can't remember any. But that's because and people are paying because and in the end you find it's even cheaper for you. So the thing is, if you do the right thing, no one is going to complain. You can't put the cart before the horse. Give everyone meter. Give them adequate supply of electricity. And the welder is happy to pay because he's making more money. The hairdresser and the barber are happy to pay because they are running light 24 hours, which means there's a constant supply to service their clients. They're happy to pay because they're making more money. The factories are happy to pay more because they don't have to worry about the logistics of buying diesel, of running diesel, and, and all of that because they have adequate power running their their production system. Uh, the Dunlops and Michelin's that left this country will be happy to come back because that is one less problem to worry about, okay? Uh, the TV stations don't have to worry too much because they know, and the embarrassment of light going off, you know, because they know that there is, you know, enough, I mean, there's adequate uh, uh, power. So with all of this, People are happy to pay a little more. So the Minister of Information, with all due respect, is getting it wrong. It's not the little we are paying that is a problem. It is the little we are getting that is a problem. Mm -hmm. Because with that little, we can't make enough to even pay the littlest amount, if you excuse my English. You understand what I'm saying? You can't even pay. You can't pay your bills. Because what the power you're getting is not enough. And even the little you're getting goes into, I mean, look at diesel, uh, petroleum prices rising every day. I mean, if you look at it per unit, you may say the increase of petrol, uh, petrol price maybe by 10 naira, by 5 naira and all that. But you have to multiply that, you know, per unit for, uh, you know, across your use for, throughout the day and throughout, um, you know, the week, the months and all of that. And it adds up to something. So, uh, Honorable Minister, sir, the problem is not how much we're paying. The problem is how much we're getting. Mm. I guess another problem is also access for, lo for a lot of people. Because if you're talking about the corporations, the news mm -hmm. networks, uh, perhaps high net worth individuals with bigger homes, all of this makes a lot of financial sense. I'm going to be paying for what I'm using. And with these meters, I'm going to know exactly what I'm using. But we know that Nigeria demogra Nigeria's demographic, Lagos's demographic, <coughs> is vast. And there are far many more people without means than there are those with. And because of that, it does seem as though as 
this transformation to prepaid meters may become more prevalent this year and ongoing, it does, it, it does lead you to think that there could be a situation where lots of people are going to be left behind in that digitalized revolution. What happens to them in that instance? I'm not sure I understand you very mm. well, but maybe in answering you might you might have a follow-up question to sure. throw more light. Mm. But I was saying something a little earlier, and that's simply that um, if people have access to light, a young man can sit in his home with not even a laptop. He's um, his, uh, let me call it palm top now, a smartphone. And there are lots of businesses you can do. You can do drop shipping, you can do build websites, or you can sell things on Instagram and all of that. You, have you noticed, why, why are power banks big business in Nigeria? That's because you, know, you, you hardly get enough uh, light. When there's light, there's prepaid, um, you use light only when you need it, and you use it for only what's important. And it makes you more productive. I keep saying it, it's not just providing the prepaid, but more importantly, providing adequate. And what makes you get adequate uh, supply of light is that those who don't need it will switch off to save for those who need it, who can afford it. Okay? The days of wastage will be over. And then people will now ration their light and use it only when necessary. <clears throat> you know? And it has, a, it has a catalyzing effect, you know, on, on the economy generally. So it is important for government to, to reason it out properly, rationally, you know, logically, because that's how it works, no other way. If we're able to do it this way, uh, it will help digitization, it will help uh, commercialization, it will help entrepreneurship, uh, it will help productivity, and um, in the end, it will still go back to the national, to the, even the electric, to benefit the electricity companies, and we're all the better for it. But government has to be able to think the process through properly and and, and logically. Otherwise, we'll just keep um, doing it the wrong way. Mm. Well, I say many thanks to you today, Victor Hai, for Thank joining us much. and helping us demystify the whole metering estimated billing and what Nigerians should get from this particular thing. I want to say thank you very much you for very joining much. us here on The Money Show. Thank you for having me.